conversation. Hello and welcome to episode 16 of the Culture Ultras podcast. I'm James. I'm joined by Theon and What's all? We what are joined. Also? <laughs> we are joined today by Have a Word content producer, documentarian, and more importantly, the reason why he's here, Wigan Athletic Superfan Harry Robinson. <laughs> welcome, Harry. Thank you, James, and thank you, Theon. Uh, yes. this- I got when I got the message through. It was like, do you want to talk about like mid noughties Wigan? And that's all <laughs> I ever want to talk about at every moment of the day. And no one ever takes me up on it. So thank you for having there's, me on. There's no, I think there's no more. There's no team more suited to four AM kitchen discussion than OO's yeah. Wigan. There's yeah. so many. There's so many like just heroes in that team. The, like those little like streets that don't forget lists. Like yeah, 50% no, that was that was a great one. The yes, literally a Tuesday. After uh, after the Borough game, with a few mates in town, and like going, and I, I remember going. Do you remember Wigan's back line? Oh, was Al Abzi, Chim Bonder, Shana, Figueroa. There's like, oh, who's the other centre back? Who's the other centre? Harry and Van der Zoo. Oh, <laughs> honestly, the Harry was is hard was hard as nails. He is now. So he was training to be a doctor before he came to start to play in third division football. <laughs> in like he was he he had like a medical license or whatever and he was gonna become a doctor and chose football instead. And then when he retired, he went he became a private investigator. Fucking the man cool. had just like done everything. Wow. <laughs> but like then at one point he was like there's that famous um gif of him like just going two footed through like uh Cristiano Ronaldo on the touchline at, at the JJB. Just like <laughs> He's like, he's, Ronaldo's doing step overs, and Arjen Dazu just comes in and, and just, you know, lets him know who's boss. <laughs> Cleans him up. Yeah, I think we had one. I think is it, I think might, I might be, uh, I might be wrong, but I think it's, uh, it's either Pogatetz or Tony McMahon just does the same thing to Ronaldo, dicking about in the corner. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> the, the first, uh, the first question I am, I've been dying to ask a Wigan fan this, and I hope you had eyes, uh, on what had happened. Were you in attendance when Maynor Figueroa scored arguably my favourite goal of all time against Stoke? No, so I wasn't in attendance Ooh. for that. Well, thanks for coming, Harry. It's been great. <laughs> <laughs> but it is the it won goal of the season that season. Mm. Um, and yeah, that was was it, was that not away at Stoke? It was not that I think it was away, yeah. Yeah, it was away, sorry, yeah. Were you at so Stoke? I would have been like ten. When he scored oh, okay. that goal, I think I didn't really start going away games until we dropped out the Premier League. Right, <laughs> I'm like like football league bred kind of Wigan fan because my oh. like I'm a, I'm a first generation Wigan fan. Like my dad is a is a Liverpool fan. Oh, um, nice. so this see, this is this is where we can bond further. Harry, you've chosen a life of misery like I have. I, 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 I love being a Wigan fan though. It's, <laughs> it's like, but my my dad used to go home and away. With Liverpool used to go all around Europe, used to have a season ticket at Anfield. Then he moved down south, because uh, he was he worked in like prisons and that, and then came back up and then couldn't get a season ticket again. So then he got one for Wigan because it was like dirt cheap. Because no, yeah. you know, Wigan was just filled with like the people who filled the the big stadium at Wigan were mainly just like Liverpool fans who couldn't get tickets, Everton yeah. fans who couldn't get tickets. United fans and City. I mean, you know, you can get tickets to City, but United fans who couldn't get tickets, and um, yeah, and, and I, I guess I just uh, supported the team that I grew up watching rather than you know supporting a team that I can't properly kind of follow. I guess. Mm. Uh, so then when they went down, and I was like kind of old enough that I could just go to Warsaw away, and like <laughs> that, that was the life that I chose. I guess. <laughs> A lovely, uh, I, I, I mean, Van Denel in the Premier League. There's something about that is just uh, <laughs> a, a lovely bright orange kit. Um, there's loads to talk about. I mean, uh, like Fion said, we could spend the whole pod just listing players. Uh, Hugo uh, Roddy Jaeger. Hugo Roddy Jaeger. Yeah, what a you know what? Hugo Roddy Jaeger scored a goal against Aston Villa. That is better, in my opinion, than the one that Jamie Vardy scored against Liverpool. 
But when Jamie Vardy scored that... You know, oh, that yeah, screen, yeah, I know what you mean. Vardy Eger scored the, almost an identical goal, except the keeper was more on his line. And no one and, it was, and the ball was about 30 yards. Like, it was a fucking ridiculous ball, wasn't it? Like, figure, yeah, was, I, figure, probably figure out oh, fucking ping. Yeah. Just... He was an absolute baller, and then he obviously scored that goal against Stoke that kept us up. There was also uh, when Franco De Santo chipped the keeper on his line against Newcastle. Yes, I remember. Just, that. Had, just like these constant again, it's all these like you know streets will never forget footballs. There's one point that we had like the entire Honduran national team. Yeah, was was just, yeah that's in my notes. Like Henry Thomas, Henry <laughs> Thomas, Figueroa, <laughs> brackets yeah. two Hondurans. I think there might be more though. Is the we had, so we had Palacios as well. Yeah. Uh, Palacios, we had Roger Espinosa, who, in my opinion, was the best player on the pitch when we played in the FA Cup final. It's a controversial opinion. But I was at the FA Cup final and he was playing out of position and just kind of which was everywhere. And I, he never, I don't think he ever gets the kind of praise that he always should do. We also had uh, Juan, uh, Juan Carlos Garcia, but he was we signed him and then he got very ill. Oh. And he, I think he only had <laughs> one football appearance, and it was four Honduras, and he scored a bicycle kick, and then, <laughs> but he, uh, so then, <laughs> then I think he passed away. So oh. well, we've had just like a constant. Oh, I mean, he passed, the he passed away, you know, uh, from being very ill. But uh, yeah, we just had a constant like weird. I don't, and I don't know why as well. I don't know why we've had so many Hondurans. Yeah. Um, there's lot, yeah. but there's lot. There's even more than that. I've got uh, Amezaki written down. What? No, whoa, whoa. Oh, take, sorry. Oh, no, well, I'd, no. I'd take umbrage with him because don't, I don't want to premature ejaculate. There we go. Uh, Please, because <laughs> he like somehow turned it on against Liverpool, and I think they, you beat turned us. It on. He never turned it off, lad. He was unreal. You beat, you beat us at Anfield, I think, like two one or something. Did he, yeah. How many, how many games that. did he play for uh, Wigan, Harry? So he played. He played. It was about half a season. Yeah, because he was... played the whole season. He would be every time Michu's name gets mentioned, Zaki's name would get mentioned because he was unbelievable. And if he had stayed at Wigan, because he was only on loan at Wigan, if he had stayed on... at Wigan for the whole season, he would have got a move somewhere big. But he loved Egypt too much. Uh, well, I think that's how the story kind of goes. So he went on uh, international duty to, for Egypt. And just fucked off and never came back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bruce wow. terminated his loan, and then everyone was like, "Why, like, let the man do whatever he wants because he's banging and got Because him and Heskey, Heskey was just like this unbelievable kind of target man, um, kind of like co striker. He never got the goals really, but he just bounced off. Zaki bounced off him so well, and we were just like running rampant, and then Zaki disappeared and. Like we we still did all right that season. It was like two thousand and eight. Uh, it was on the only seasons that we weren't. By the first season when we finished like tenth, it was like the only season where we weren't like kind of fighting relegation, a one off. And uh, but we would have been a lot better if we'd kept Zaki. I mean that, and he had just the best jawline ever. Like he had a chin on him. Uh, he was a <laughs> just like he was a powerful looking man. <laughs> was it was it like third? Was it? I I, I, I might be wrong. But um, was it like thirteen goals in fifteen games or something? He scored something ridiculous, wasn't it? Uh, I'll. It was. It was a lot. I mean, it was like the Egyptian I, I, I don't know. He scored. <laughs> uh, he scored ten goals in twenty nine appearances. Oh right, well maybe but not. I think he scored ten like very yeah. quickly. Yeah, was, him and Steve Bruce really fell out um, because he just was going home and then not coming back. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think he was. I think he got his. I can't remember when he got his like loan terminated, but it was just like sudden, from what I remember anyway. But again, when that was going on, I was eight or seven, I think. So, like, it's yeah. it's like distinctively in my head. But again, like my era is like the less, bar the FA uh, FA Cup win, it's like the less successful era of Wigan Athletic, where mm. we went bankrupt twice. You um, must the- Max Powers. No. Yes. My, yeah, my uh, friend knows his dad. Carry on. Oh, really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Max, Max Power is one, and he, um, Wigan fans didn't like him last season. Uh, and I, I have the softest spot for Max Power because he yeah. was like, his first season at Wigan, when we was our first season in League One, was just like the most exciting. He could just hit a ball from like 
for like 40 yards and would sail top corner. He had this mad like right foot on him. And he was, yeah, and also his name was Max Power, which yeah, is the coolest yeah. name of all of world football. You won't find a stick. Like, it's, it's Homer Simpson's cool name. It's how cool <laughs> the name is. Uh, and he's now making lots of money in Saudi Arabia, Max Power. Oh, yes. oh wow. Cool. For Robbie Fowler's team, although Robbie Fowler's not there anymore, but Robbie Fowler signed him. So he's playing like second tier Saudi football. But so Mohammed bin Salman there. is after in uh, world football as well, Max Power. So. <laughs> Um, I assume that the FA Cup is, you know, in yeah. your time of being a Wigan fan is probably the, like the highlight so far. Would you say? Uh, absolutely. I, I so I was twelve or thirteen, um, and I went down with my stepdad, who is a Wigan fan. Uh, nice little like full circle. I went with my step with my stepdad, and I have like a, I had like a jester hat on, and like <laughs> the Wigan like. We we stopped at a, we stopped at like a, a service station on the coach that we got down, and they were just selling like loads of what random wig and shite. So we, I just bought. Them. <laughs> um, and then yeah, then we were in Wem- and we were right behind the goal. There's a photo that was at the back of all the papers. Um, I think explicitly like the times of um, me in this Wigan in this Wigan jester's like it's it's of Wigan fans, but it's. The focal, the, the focus is, like, the depth of field is on me, on this photo, and I'll send you it if you want. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, that's going, that's with, going in the thumbnail. Look. With, with just, like, this sea of Wigan fans and flags behind, but then there's me in this daft, and I've got, like, a horrible fringe. I mean, I don't know <laughs> But it just looks like I've just carefully put each, like, I just look scruffy. But, uh, I honestly, I remember, I remember the game just being, like, so tense, and then I remember... Uh, just a complete pandemonium when the goal went in. Mm-hmm. And I have, like, it's etched into my mind, me and my stepdad just, like, screaming at each other. But obviously for him, he used to go to watch Wigan in the, you know, 70s, 80s, and 90s. He was at Springfield Park era. He used to, like, what duck happened? under the fence and, and sneak in when he was younger. Oh. And he's watched the club that he grew up watching win a major, like, trophy, which we may never, you know, Wigan might never win another major trophy whilst I'm alive. And we, I just remember us screaming at each other. Um, and then just like that coach home was just like bouncing. And oh, we were on the coach with Callum McManaman's girlfriend. He was <laughs> last minute. And he, she was on the phone to him and he was just like sobbing. Because he had like, the, he oh. got man of the match as well. So he got the man of the match trophy. And he's on the bus just like crying. Like, you know, absolutely ecstatic. Because it, it was mental. Like there's no, there was no kind of, <laughs> there was no reason for us to have beat City at that time, especially when, you know, kind of the, if you look at those two teams, like it, it, it was a team as well, a Wigan side that was kind of like, uh, chopped down a bit with injury. Why we kind of got relegated, we had like kind of, rotating, uh, defenders at times. We didn't have like a solid kind of, defensive structure. Um, yeah, and it, it, on it, it's up. I think if I have kids. They will like those days of the birth of my children will won't come close to. <laughs> uh, like unless unless they come out, you know, and by the age of two and won like the Johnson's paint trophy or something. <laughs> like I, they they're never gonna compare to like you know Ben Watson. Yeah. Oh yeah, I I hate that with like uh, when people go like oh yeah. Um... Oh yeah, me, me, uh, you know, my wedding day, birth of my children was better. Just fuck off, was it better than like yeah. if you if you're a Liverpool fan at Istanbul? Fuck off, was it better than that? There's no chance that any baby I'm having can jump higher than Jack Rodwell. I know, <laughs> you know, you can quote me on that. <laughs> the uh, was it? What year was that? Was it the FA Cup? Was it uh, 2013? 2013. Yeah, because I was I was thinking because I was trying to remember if City had won anything by that point. Well, they can just won the league, haven't they? That, that, I was, yeah, I was going to say that. I mean, like, what was going to lead on to my next thing about that era of football? Uh, I was it's, it's before the darkness took over, in it before. Yeah, there was like, well, there was this brief glimmer of spontaneity where City, I think, had just started winning the odd cup here and there, which meant that the runners up got. To, so there was like Portsmouth got into Europe, uh, Stoke, yeah. Birmingham yeah. obviously won it. Like, and you, you know, Wigan going to. Uh, Europa League. I was in Slovenia in June. Uh, not that's not that's not that's not a brag. Sorry, just on holiday. Um, but 
Some, someone's doing all right for himself today. Uh, still, still paying. Leblana, it. Leblana in June. Still paying for it. Um, <laughs> I uh, I went to the Maribor. I went to Maribor. Went to the Maribor yeah. shop. There's a. I kid you not. There was a huge like plaque of Wigan's game against Maribor, and I oh, uh, wow. mentioned mentioned it to the lady behind the shop, and she was like, "Oh yeah, Wigan fans are apparently held in high regard in uh, Maribor. They're very no. very lovely." So we, so the, the, we went to Maribor and then we also went to Ruben Kazan and we nicked. Like sometimes when we have um, corners, we'll go like we'll go ooh ah, and we just nicked that because it was like we need. To, we're probably not going to get. We should have gone out of the group really, but it was one of those ones. Where it's like we're not going to get far in the Europa League, so let's take a souvenir. So we nicked that chant. Wow, um, which I doesn't get done enough anymore. But it was like it. it I don't know. It's like it's like when City robbed the Poznan. Like it was that level, except you know a bit more tin pot, I guess. I've, I've got a, I've got a story about <clears throat> Kazan actually, because um, that's that's the only I've been to Wigan a few times with Borough, but the only time I've been with that's not that's uh, non Borough was uh, my mate uh, in school. Shout out Callum Hornby uh, and his granddad. Nice one, lad, for taking me um, to the home game against Ruben Kazan and for like all week in school. I was like, yes, this is going to... Fucking Russian fans in Wigan. This is going to be mad. <laughs> there's going to be flares. There's going to be fights. It's going to be class. And there's about 12 of them. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, uh, but it was uh, still still the experience, in it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we also had Zoltar Varigan in our... Yeah. Which, yeah. Was, which is the Belgian side. Um, but, like, it, it, like we should have... I, I feel like we should have got... We should have competed a bit better than this. This was the year that we had Owen Coyle as our manager. Oh, and that yeah. was just like everyone hated it. Everyone hated Owen Coyle because of how he underperformed with a good with a, a Wigan side that had funding that was a good Wigan side. And he'd been at Burnley as well before, hadn't he? Yeah, well, no, but he'd been at Bolt, Bolton, which is yeah. rivals. Oh, yeah. And, and his assistant manager had a, the Bolton badge tattooed on his arm. <laughs> and was doing fucking training sessions with the Wigan squad, and no one, everyone hated it. Um, yeah, so I, and then he was kicked out, and then we had Uwe Rosler after that. Um, oh, Uwe Rosler! Yeah. Like, this is one thing I will give. I don't. I will not give credit to, uh, credit to City very often. However, uh, Uwe Rosler's granddad, Bond Old Trafford, is objectively a hilarious song. <laughs> 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 That's so funny. He, he was a great manager as well. I mean, like he, he, I, I watched a video of him like doing the masterclass of like how he ma- masterminded the year after we when we beat City in the cup, uh, and like James Page scored, and he James had like, Perch. but it was like a team that like City's team was better and our team was worse, and we still beat City. Um, and oh, and um, Emerson Boyce pulled off the best block in football history. Emerson Boyce, Emerson Boyce, Emerson Boyce, yeah, Emerson Boyce, pulled off the best block in football oh. history. Barbadian, Barbadian, wow, there we go. That's not, <laughs> that, that, I, feel like I can't even. Oh, oh, there's so many, so many Wigan. Well, not... Wigan are the quintessential kitchen team. Emerson yeah, fucking yeah. Boyce. I've not felt about this like any like other fans we've had on. It's been like, oh yeah, yeah. but Wigan, it's like Kumas, Baines, Borard, <laughs> Jason Kumas. Uh, Jason Kumas Jason could have gone all the Kuma. way. Jason Kumas was so talented. And yeah, then never. Oh, we had Gary Teal as well. Early oh, days. Yes. Yeah. Neil will tear you <laughs> apart again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the, the, oh the, Gary Teal. Just like uh, uh, Lee McCulloch. Oh. Like oh, Lee Cook, we had like Baines playing left wing, and he was brilliant. Did you like, have Fitz Hall at Wigan? So he said, "Yeah, Fitz Hall was Fitz at Wigan." Hall. There you go. Uh, we had one Mark Bent at one point as well before he started going mad and like threatening police with cleavers. <laughs> he, was, he was at Wigan. But, you know, just, they, we had loads. Just like, Titus Bramble, the Titus yeah. Bramble. More, more controversial one. Titus, uh, yeah, for his extracurriculars, but you know. <laughs> uh, the Titus Bramble and obviously like Chim Bonder, which oh, is Chim like, Bonder, Chim Bonder, which now who now manages around the corner from me, which yes, is like Skem. <laughs> well, they see, but they don't even play in Skem. Like I'm in Bersco at the moment. They play behind the big Tesco at Bersco. <laughs> <laughs> Where did Bersco play then? Because Bersco got through to the play, FA Cup. They 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 play in Bersco Stadium. Oh right. Um. So you know, it's a heated rivalry there with these <laughs> <laughs> Bersco. <laughs> 
not to, I know he's just been mentioned, Owen Coyle. I've got a photo on my phone of Owen Coyle um, being presented with a pie that's been like of himself. <laughs> <laughs> like, they've made a pie of Owen Coyle. Another one. Them. I've got another one. I might, I might be wrong actually. I'm second guessing myself. Connor Salmon played for Wigan. Connor Salmon, yeah. Connor he's Salmon. Salmon. He will score. <laughs> the the, uh, the famous uh, you know uh, getting presented it wasn't at Wigan it was at where was it Pat was it Pat Thistle or St Mirren or someone um, where he got presented with a pizza for man of the match he had um, a round head Connor Salmon oh uh, he had a perfectly circular like face Connor <laughs> <laughs> um, Salmon what would you I'm say I'm literally doing this with Wigan all day Unbelievable. Was he Izzy? I forgot about Lee McCullough. No, Muzzy Izzy didn't play for Wigan. No, no, then well, ruined it. Did. It was before. Yeah, fucking hell, right. That's it, James. Fuck ruined off. it. Man, I'll just talk about <laughs> Lee McCullough. I've gone, gone into the zoo with the Zeds. The Zeds. <laughs> Dr. Zoo. Um, uh, the, the the current state of of Wigan, uh, where, 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 like, for those uh, listening who, who who might be unaware, what what I was, is there a bit of stability now after the sort of roller coaster of what's happened yeah. financially? So I when I was eighteen, and this is the reason I don't do like I always wanted to be a sports journalist, and then I when I was eighteen we went into admin, and I me and, and a couple others were like the only ones that were really reporting on what was going on, mm. and I was speaking to the administrators every day, and I was one of the people that that put, at the age of 18, put together the defence when we appealed the points deduction. Really? Wow. Wow. Um, so it, it was me, like, I, I, me and the QC were like, kind of, <laughs> cool. like, like I, I was like sending evidence to the QC. Um, but then, <laughs> they were all, um, but yeah, so, so then we went bust, then we got bought by uh, Talal, or we bought, the fellow called Talal Al Muhammad, his father-in-law bought the club, but he was like this Bahraini fella who was like the saviour of Wigan. And he loved the idea that he was the saviour of Wigan. Mm. He was going around accepting pies with his face on it. He was like, you know, offering people hats that never really got delivered to people. Um, <laughs> just like, just like he, he loved being like, and he, and he blatantly did care about the club, I think. And then the father-in-law just decided, oh, he, he we're not going to give any money anymore. So then we just, they weren't paying players or staff. Oof. Um And then we got another points deduction. So we got minus eight this season. We got, we got deducted points last season and then we got minus eight for this season. Mm. Um, but now we've been bought by uh, a fella in Wigan who's like a billionaire who now owns the rugby as well. Which I mean, yeah. Wigan football and Wigan rugby have always hated each other. Um, I was going to ask you that, yeah. The same, the same roof, I guess, uh, which is a bit weird. But uh, so, so like stability wise, like we're we're on, we're fine. I mean, mm. <laughs> like I think everyone's just happy that you know the club's kind of alive, and like Mike Danson who owns the club, like has a lot of money. Um, but then all, yeah, I, I think we're not going to get relegated this season. But if we did, it would be like rough because we'd be like League Two with players that we can't afford to keep, you know, and that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, you know, as long as the club's alive. I'm not really fussed. We can play, you know, dog and duck on a weekend. Yeah. We, you know, we'll get James McLean back. <laughs> right. I like, think, I think that with, like with, uh, I think it's like it's like all, in all top. I think in all three, I might be wrong, but in all three of the leagues, obviously you've got Luton, Burnley, fucking, uh, what's it? Luton, Burnley, Sheffield United. In the Championship, uh, there's a bit close. There's two Chef Wednesday and Rotherham who are just dead already. Yeah. And it's like Cheltenham and Cheltenham. We didn't win a game till like two weeks ago. Yeah, um, and like so, it's like in, I don't. I think it's like I think like all the money and stuff from City, etc. It's now like it's been obviously going on for ten, fifteen years, and not City to blame, obviously ever, but like all the money is like the proper. You know, it's starting to catch up where there's like the standard of the leagues are getting so much worse all yeah. the yeah. way down. Oh yeah, there's no way you can compete with the Prem. Mm. Um, like you know, like look at Luton. But even Chef Wednesday was like, in terms of fans, obviously they're run by a fucking dickhead. But like the, uh, like in terms of fans and money and sort of profit, sustainability, well, whatever you want to call it, um, they should be t- uh, top, at least a top half championship team. Yeah. By the crowds that they get, etc. 
And like they're, they're already relegated this season. So he's got like 12 points or something, 13 points. Yeah. It's just madness. Mm. But on the flip side, you've got like Everton who, you know, financially, you know, you know world, of their, world of their own and dock 10 points and they're playing like it's not even happened, you know. <laughs> yes. It says a lot, doesn't it? But, you know, with, especially the three teams that have come up, the disparity. <laughs> Absolutely mental. Well, when we got docked 12 points in the championship, we almost stayed up on the last yeah, day. Yeah, it was on the last day, wasn't it? Uh, I was devastated. But like, we could have stayed. I mean, I'm not sure how good it would have been to then stay up. But we'd still be bankrupt. Like, we spent the whole next season. The whole next season, we played with like youth players uh, and managed to stay up with like academy players and like people on like three week contracts. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we had like Will Keane. We just kind of gave Will Keane a contract oh, because no one else wanted him. And now he's at Preston because he he had scored in a decade or 11 years of football or something. He'd scored nine goals. And in his season for us, I think he scored like 20. So he's like <laughs> double, like tripled, I guess, his, his goal <laughs> record. That he, and he, out of like, you know, like his, of the last 11 years or something in one season. That's mental, isn't it? If I had one request, and I know it is, it is now DW. It, it, if the yeah. new owner could somehow just buy back the rights to JJB, because that, <laughs> that I a lot of my core memories of a child are linked with JJB, uh, and using the plus screen, <laughs> uh, one for the therapist to twenty, sort of doing keepy ups with footballs and then being told off, uh, practicing. <laughs> Cricket shots, what, etc. There's something so so iconic about like I know Derby had Puma and then Puma, but like that that kit when you first got promoted with the proper old badge, uh, yeah, on, the like, Wigan Council badge, absolutely. and then we had because because Dave Wheeler just decided to change the badge to the Wigan Council, and then we had the JJB sponsor, and then the kit was also manufactured by JJB, so we just had it on twice. Yeah. <laughs> I just think like, that's perfect. I, I, yeah, iconic. Well, JJB, technically, anyone I think can have the rights to JJB now because I'm pretty sure they're defunct. No, he's sorry. Culture uh, Ultras podcast sponsored by JJB. Uh, <laughs> he, he sold it to Mike Ashley and then it went bust like, um, like a couple of months later. Um, asset stripped to fuck. And he's like, just Dave Willen getting out early. He's a smart <laughs> man. <laughs> like, oh, right. <laughs> uh, no, I, I don't know. He, he, no, that was the thing that he mentioned it a lot. I think now he has. I don't, I don't actually. I don't know for certain. I think he, the the thing is that he he is has like Alzheimer's. Right? But it, it what's really lovely is that they'll interview him sometimes, very occasionally because he's a bit reclusive now about like um, Wigan or about the FA Cup, and his eyes light up and he can read like he can just say yeah. all of the FA Cup win like like it that was happening yesterday because he's just like this old man who's like dead proud of mm. like, the the Wigan. I guess when I won the FA Cup. Uh, but, that, but I think, yeah, his, 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 his old story used to be that he that he broke his leg in the FA Cup final. And then that got eclipsed by the fact that he took uh, Wigan, to the, Wigan to Wembley. And he did a song with, there's a band called Chonkin' Feckle. <laughs> <laughs> who were like a, a Wigan folk band. It's like two fellas. And one of them plays the banjo or something. And, um, and they sang like a, a Wigan folk song about winning the FA Cup. And it's like Dave Whelan, like obviously loved them because he loves Wigan. And the music video is like Dave Whelan just like dancing on like one of the seats. <laughs> I mean, watch that. Uh, Chris Kirkland. Uh, so, uh... <laughs> I was um, trying to think who the other keeper was. Maybe Chris Kirkland, I, I have like, um, I have a signed shirt in my room with Chris Kirkland on the back. Like, I used to want to be a goalkeeper growing up. And Chris Kirkland was like my idol. That like he was so I've got I've got my brother my I've got a thirteen year old brother and he goes to the Wigan games now and he wears all of my old oh, Wigan wow. kits but a load of them just have like Kirkland on the back <laughs> yeah. a, a, an obscure player to be wearing in like tw- 2023, 2024. <laughs> just, like, rocking up with like <laughs> with a Chris Kirkland thirteen on the back oh yeah and um, Cooper's oh. number thirteen. I've got written here, there's in the Google Doc. You see, you've recently been to uh, Germany. Was that football related? It was, sorry, it, it was with my, my mate is uh, German. Right. Uh, so we, we, went, we went to see his family, really. I've, it's always been a thing of like, I want to go to Germany. But we did go to 
me and my friend Powell have had the same FIFA, well, say the same FIFA career. Like uh, over all of the FIFAs, like a kind of long running FIFA career since uh, like FIFA 10 maybe or FIFA 8 or something. Um, and we went to go a bit. One of the clubs that we managed that we got sacked from was uh, SC Vail which is a third division German club. Right. And we just snuck into that stadium and took some photos. <laughs> <laughs> like we, we have like a, I've got, honestly, I've got it on my phone somewhere. We, I have like a hall of fame of all of the players that we'd signed. Because what happened was we were like eight and we started the FIFA career with Leicester when Leicester were in the championship and uh, lost every game. Yeah. Like continually lost every game. And we signed Zigic and we put him on a free kick and he scored one free kick after about 30 games of losing. And we were like, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> so we that so then the next FIFA we just kind of picked the club that we were like on the same level at after Arch. We kind of went down a bit. And we've just done the same. We have never won a league title ever. Um this is <laughs> like so many seasons. Never won a league title. Um we've won uh we only won our first domestic trophy last year. Uh, <laughs> and that was uh, the Danish Cup with um, F, uh, IF Silkborg. Nice. Oh, yeah. So we were managing FC Paris. And we were like, this is going to be great. We're going to take them to the top. We're going to beat PSG. And then I set a, I was doing someone's contract. And I accidentally set his release clause as 30K. Because I thought that was his way. And the next day, we got sacked immediately. He was like, you can't be putting players away. Players release clauses at 30K. So the mm. only club that would take us was this Danish club. So then we then signed the player that I just put up for 30K. So we <laughs> and then went on a cup run and won the cup there. And then that was, it was like two in the morning. And we're both like 20. <laughs> at the time. No. Just like or 21, just absolutely, but like, I've never been so happy. It, honestly, it goes Wigan winning the FA Cup and then, you know, it's Harry Glatz winning, winning the, the, the Danish Super Cup with uh, IF Silkborg. So, yeah, there's a great, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but there's a great, great interview with uh, like Danish TV. Where I think it's like, it's like either late night, I think it's late night, is, and it's like the guys are silk, and he's, he's interviewing Liam Gallagher, and he, he got like he's prepared this. He's got like Gallagher on the back of it and everything. You know, can they give you this shirt? He goes, no, mate, it's red. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I am. Um, I, I I I'm speechless of that because I think that FIFA, uh, especially YouTubers who do FIFA careers, need to be humble a bit because. Whenever I play FIFA, I personally, I think, well, where's my level at? Oldham Athletic. I can't jump in at a Barca. I can't jump in at a Real. Even though it's a simulation, the pressure I'm under. I'm doing the Newcastle Challenge, guys. I've yes. got unlimited money. Uh, let's see what I can do. Oh, and Bappe. And Bappe seems for oh, I've won the league in fucking yeah. one go. Fuck exactly. Off. So the fact that you're, you know, <laughs> doing a club here, I think that's fantastic. And the fact you've done it for so long is amazing. I think that's great. Honestly, we've done 14 clubs. We, um, it's the aim. So we've we've come close to winning two league titles. Three, maybe. We we all, we fell short with Vissel Kobe um, and then just jumped ship who, immediately. Who actually won the league this year. I know, exactly. But they didn't win it with us, so it doesn't matter. Did you have any ship from, them, jump ship from them to River Plate, which was a big, big, big move. And we were like, <laughs> oh my God, River Plate won us. So then we signed Barry Bannon. Obviously. Oh, <laughs> uh, we signed, signed Barry Bannon for River Plate uh, and then a couple others. And we get to the last game of the season and Boca Juniors, who at the time had no rights on FIFA, so they were just like a nameless club. Had won the league, but like the way only way we could have won, they were six goals ahead of us on goal difference, or seven. There were seven goals ahead of us on goal difference, so they had to lose, and we had to win seven nil, and we'd have we'd have won the league, and we win. We we've, we fly. We play with four up top. Fly out the gate, <laughs> uh, and it's six nil coming into the ninety. Pushcast River play team. <laughs> on, on six nil coming into the ninety first minute. Ball gets the Barry Bannon. 35 yards out. I've never seen a sweeter shot hit and it goes right into the stanchion. The fans go mad. 
a game ends immediately after and Martin Tyler does the commentary where it's like, they've done it! And all the fans are cheering and we're, we're losing our minds. We're like, no way, has that just happened? And then it goes on to the like the scores on the doors for the rest of the day and like Boca Juniors won 3 0 and it was like one nil after so they like we hadn't won. Martin Tyler had just lied to us because the game had like <laughs> have we just like we put FIFA away for a bit it was like we're that's what the end of River play we can't go that far and then, yes, <laughs> and then painful. Um, did you have did you have any Esther in your Vissel Kobe team or was this was before he went we, we I think we might have done but he was like L there was there was a point where because what would happen is we'd be younger and we would like stay up stupidly late, and we would if we would start winning, we'd then go delirious because it was like two in the morning, and we'd just like have loads of sweets. I say like I say like this little we're dead young, like we were like fifteen, <laughs> like <laughs> and uh, last week, yeah, just stay stay up dead late, and we had like uh, I just I went through I just like start being silly, and we signed low we signed like Shinsuke Nakamura, no, but he was like forty on the game, so we just signed all of these elderly. <laughs> like Japanese players, and I mean, I'm trying to think who else we had at Vissel Kobe. It wasn't uh, King Kazu, was it? The lad who's still playing at 54. We we just had we signed loads of players which were funny names, for like because <laughs> we were just because we're stupid. So yeah, or there would be like, like the last time we played was with Braga, and we we turned uh, Mark Albrighton into like uh, a, like a a, a a striker and played him alongside Baz Dos. Oh, Baz oh Dost yes, Baz oh, Dost last minutes, and Mark Albrighton isn't like because what had happened was we'd won the, that cup, and then we went to the MLS and almost won the league, and we were like, right, we're gonna jump to, uh, we're gonna jump to like a, an all right team in in Europe, and went to Braga, and uh, just tanked, and then we were like, oh. <laughs> um, me, me, me and my friends do that, like you, you'd manage like. We used to call them projects, so it'd be like, oh, like we might go for like Hamburg because like teams that like obviously had success earlier or are on the periphery of yeah doing all right. I'd always go for like a Valencia or a Hamburg or so, and then how are you getting on with them? Yeah, relegated, mate. Relegated. Yeah. Do you know, we 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 we'd never been relegated. But that's always because we would just be shit houses and jump shit before. That's why we've had so many clubs. Like if we were on the verge of relegation, we would just jump ship to like we got a good offer at Club Bruges at one point we were like this will be a doddle and then we all we, Club Bruges we just tanked yeah. they sacked us so quickly and then we were at St. Truiden for a bit and then the Belgian league the way that they structure their league is horrendous yeah it's like a uh, so divide then, isn't it? it just sapped all of the fun out of the career because we were at a <laughs> club that we didn't like with no way no budget or players that we knew in a league that made no sense the work that I did, I did similar on a, you know, because foot, when football manager comes out, comes like the beta version comes out like three weeks before. Yeah. And this was in lockdown, so I'd fuck all else to do. So within three weeks, I did I, Operation Gretna, uh, which was take out and beat from Scottish League Two to the Prem to the Prem, was complete. Yeah. Um, but so, so it was like two, it was like a week, but I think it had like four or five days till the proper one came out. I'm come do a season in that time. Um, and then because I had no money, we'd only just turned professional when we got promoted to the SPL. And they went, "Here's your budget, like twelve quid, nice yeah, one." Yeah. And the uh, so like, all my players are shite League One level. No, like I go scout in the Scottish Championship, and they go, "No, nah, your team's not good enough. You are playing for Inverness in the fucking Championship." <laughs> the, <laughs> and then so yeah, I did all that, and then I got halfway through, and I was like. 10 points adrift of safe, if not, not safety, the relegation playoff in Scotland. And I was like, right, I'm going to not do this anymore. So I've not got a relegation on me. Yeah. Yeah, um, turn the I'm hips the... job down as well. I shouldn't have turned the hips job down. <laughs> I remember the older days of FIFA where like, we try and sign players. Um, f- uh, like when we were in like, kind of, we were at like Le Havre <laughs> at one point. We were trying to sign players, and none of them wanted to come from Spain because it was like worse weather in La Havre. No, like, one of those players that like no, I don't think I'll suit the climate of no, La Havre. We had we had that with um we had that with in real life with Nemanja Matic the year before Chelsea signed him. Who came? Borough had a deal agreed, and he came up to Borough. I had a look round and went no. <laughs> <laughs> and when next well, year went to Chelsea, won everything. So that's a, we did that with Guardiola. Guardiola was going to join Wigan 
Buffalo. after at the end of his career, and then it didn't happen. And then we also had a deal in principle or something for De Gea, Fuck. and then decided against it and got like I think we got um oh it was the Jamaican goal uh, no. We had Richard, I think you got Richard Kingsman instead or something. Oh, yeah, Garnane. Garnane, yeah. Yeah, got, and uh, fun fact, fun, fun fact about this. So, Richard Kingsman and um, Stojkovic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The goalkeeper. So, both of those were reserve goalkeepers at Wigan and they and played it... against each other in the World Cup. Wow. No, so the only no, time no. two goalkeepers from the same team played against each other at the World Cup and they not neither of them were playing for Wigan. <laughs> <laughs> That's my dad. That reminds me when you're saying about uh, looking at Borough and going, no, Mil- when Liverpool let go of Milan Jovanovic, uh, uh, absolute cult hero, like, awful. Um, one of, <laughs> one of the, the reasons he cited was apparently that there weren't enough Serbians on the team, which makes me sort of wonder if Roy Hodgson was sort of desperately phoning <laughs> everyone. Bel, Bel- Nikola Zigic again. Bellum again. <laughs> Roy Hodgson coming in full polka dot Croatian dress every day, <laughs> yeah, yeah. making him feel unwelcome. Bastard. <laughs> On Altovic, I said Mitrovic. <laughs> <laughs> Do, uh, Gary Caldwell? Gary Caldwell. Oh, there we go. And Stephen Caldwell. Yeah. The Caldwell brothers. So Gary was like, Gary lifted the FA Cup even though he didn't play. But he was like club captain at the time, but he was injured, I think. Yeah. Uh, and then he was our manager for a bit. And then he manages Exeter, and we played Exeter this season. And uh, he slagged off Wigan as a club. Oh, bastard. Because we'd like, because the players had like time wasted or something at the end of the game. And he was like, he was like, this isn't the Wigan I know. So ben, that's <laughs> proper your da stuff, that, isn't it? Yeah. To destroy your legacy. Do you have of, of the. Either era before uh, or or whilst you you were supporting, have you got like an, a standout favourite Wigan player, or is it is it too difficult to? Um, Nick Powell is, oh, the, yeah. is the answer. Nick Powell hated football so much, hates football, <laughs> still playing. The man did not care in the slightest, but he was one of the best players I've seen play for Wigan. Like I've seen him get get so like get told he's coming off. He goes, no. Two minutes later, scores a goal and then just walked off the touchline. <laughs> One time, he played against Rotherham and it was 2 all. Um, and I want to say that he scored the two goals prior, but I, may, I might be getting confused there, but it was 2 all anyway and we were 2 nil down originally. And uh, Lewis Price was in goal for Rotherham and Rotherham go on the counter and Nick Powell starts joking with Lewis Price and goes, oh, get on my back. Like as a piggyback. This is like 91st minute. So he then gets him on his back and then carries him out of the box and then jumps on the floor as if like he's been jumped on by Lewis Price. And the linesman pulls it back and then goes, well, well, I mean, technically he was jumped on by the goalkeeper. They were doing like piggybacks. Technically they were jumped on. So he pulled it back for a free kick when they were, when Rotherham were on the attack. Nick Powell took it, bent it top corner, we won the game. <laughs> wow. he, he used to play like he was always on Fortnite all the time and he would like, he would just, like stream in Fortnite with like <laughs> with like the Wigan just Wigan players that didn't play often he hated football he had a clause in his contract they would never do press he would never speak to any member of the press I think he had the same one in his Stoke contract as well he now plays for he was a great player for Stoke he now plays for Stockport for a laugh they, yeah. Nick Powell is like cult hero level and when he left it was just like it was fair play for us to have him in League One because he would tear people apart and not he you know I I, he, I saw he baited Ashley Williams to body slam him into an advertising hoarding and I went to Stoke away and Ashley Williams got sent off and he was just laughing but he got <laughs> thrown into an advertising hoarding for it <laughs> yeah the Nick Powell I think is up there uh, which is I guess more the kind of Era just gone, but not like the kind of early naughty kind of or mid naughty kind of era. Well, awesome. Uh, this, I mean, we could go on forever here. Generally, like, I'm just trying to wrap my brains of more uh, <laughs> of more Wigan players. Uh, again, I'd like to be honest. I think there's just 
one of those teams, they are the ultimate and this is no this is not an insult, it's a genuine compliment of like oh when when you hark back to the halcyon days of what the internet now called prime Barclays. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'd say Wig Wigan for me are are, are, are up there as sort of a quintessence. So, w- w- Wigan, Barclays Wigan were just fucking they were impossible to hate. Yeah. Like, just so yeah. like like just fucking like because I like, had no money. I did like but uh, great, but like players like how could you hate a team with players like Pascal Chimbonda oh, and Paul Sharna in it? Charles and Zogbia. Charles and Zog. Charles and Zogbia. When when we beat Arsenal three two, and they were two 0 up with ten minutes to go, and in Zogbia scores that screamer that goes like, yeah, you're just like outside. Was that the another box. goal? Was that not another goal of the season? That one. Uh, I'm not sure. It might, it might have been one of the contenders. I'm not sure if it. Uh, I mean, even Sean Maloney's our manager now. When Sean Maloney was in the Prem, Sean Maloney, uh, I Sean Maloney Sean Maloney are the only win we've ever had over United. It's an absolute screamer. Yeah, because that and was when they, yeah. that was like that ruined. Didn't that ruin United's title hopes? That yeah, yeah. that ruined yeah. United. That was also in the kind of pocket I think where we had to beat like all of the big teams to stay up, and we did. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, no, the, the, like bring Sean back Maloney, Wigan in back. Jordi Gomez. Unbelievable passer of the ball. Uh, yeah, we had, and then you know, and then we had like we signed Mauro Bazelli at one point, and then that sank the club. Spent sixteen million or something on Mauro Bazelli. He played one appearance, and then played in Argentina or something. We just shipped him away. No, we we always mention it like whenever we get a fan, I'm like oh, we'll 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 have to go down. We do plan on, but I I genuinely love to go for uh, to go to the pa- for the game. pies alone. Yeah. I think I think we should do it, mate. I, I, you're more than welcome to come with me down to the <laughs> game. That my, I'm not sure if it is anymore because I don't sit in the in the West Stand when I go. But my, I'm, I've got there's a photo of me in the West Stand <laughs> when after the whole kind of admin thing, the club like started did like a fun like a fan fundraiser thing, I guess, and they called me to be a part of it. So my mug, I was a bit fatter as well, is like. Um, is like in some wig and coat. I look like Max off Max and Paddy. <laughs> uh, behind this big wig and head. Uh, like, like it, it's this big metal wig and head, I guess, that's in the town centre. And I'm like posing like that. And that's in the West Stand. So if we go, we end up getting tickets to the West Stand, I'll show you. Oh, well, we're, doing me. <laughs> we're doing that before the season's out, mate, definitely. Yeah, that's definitely. Awesome, that, unlike, uh, was it Leeds who went over COVID? You could get your photo put in the stadium, yeah. and, and there was about 10 million Harold Shipmans dotted around. Yeah. Would well, you remember when, because uh, Everton did that <laughs> one where it was like the people who died during COVID, and one of the photos that was on there was Anne Frank, but it was like the famous photo of Anne Frank. So I don't know how who's edited that video. Oh. And not realised that it was. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think uh, Jeffrey Epstein made it onto one of them as well. I don't, I don't think it was Everton's, but I, there, was yeah. a, there was a load of um, like Aki from Liverpool. I don't want to call oh, it by yeah. his full name because it's a bit it's racially kind of insensitive. Yeah. But, you know, Aki, uh, Akinwale Araboki. <laughs> like load, there was loads of cutouts of him in like second division German football because that was the first <laughs> on telly. So then they like there's loads of people started putting. <laughs> Putting his boat up everywhere. Oh. <laughs> Before you go, I, I'd love to mention uh, your, your your new uh, documentary, Mother's Ruin: Unmasking the WMSCOG. Uh, can you tell us what what what, what it's about? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a um, uh, it's about a church cult, a South Korean church cult. Uh, the one I looked into was the branch in Manchester, but there are branches all over the world. Um, and they believe that a woman, an elderly woman who lived in South Korea is like God on earth, and they send her money, and they pray to her every day. And it's it's just like a big kind of, the the, the church kind of, um, you know, abuse their members, and they extort them lots of money and stuff like that. So it's it's that kind of level, that kind of, you know, investigating a cult, yeah. <laughs> I guess. Um, it, it's a bit less less access than, than other stuff I've done because they they kind of tried to shut me out a little bit, um. But yeah, so that's basically it. I spoke to a lot of survivors about their kind of experiences, but also at the same time, the group is from the outside looking in a little bit 
mental, like in terms of what they believe in. And they believe that only 140,000 people go to uh, heaven and you go to heaven if you give enough money to... to no, it makes sense. Oh, God. It's, it's always funny, isn't it? Cults are always like, you know, you have to give us all your money uh, and uh, we get to shag whoever we want. So it always seems to be the two main criteria. You know what? They, and they, they hate the shagging because they don't want anyone to have babies because oh. I mean, they... Oh, oh yeah. Uh, but all, all the other cults are like, they, you know, they love a bit of kind of sex. <laughs> I, I think she just loved that like, money and, I don't know, Huang He Chan or something. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Hong Min uh, Grandma. Give all your money to Hong Min Grandma. Well, uh, <laughs> at, at this cult, we're all about football. Uh, Harry, uh, <laughs> this this has been a... a we're, gen- we're looking for, we're looking for 140,000 <laughs> subscribers. Uh, <laughs> Um, this this has been a, a genuine pleasure, mate. Honestly, oh, mate, thank, thank you so much. Been, been 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 where, yeah. where can people uh, find find your work, and where can they find you online? Uh, so you can find me on uh, my Twitter and my Instagram is uh, at Rob O'Harry, R O B B O H A R R Y. Um, if you just type in Mother's Ruin documentary, it should come up on YouTube. Uh, you know that's if it's still the church kind of come for these kind of things. So if it's not there, then I'm dead in a ditch somewhere, or I've got a bag over my head and never. <laughs> um, but yeah, and you can also find my my first documentary that I did with a, a, a kind of black supremacist hate group in the states, um, which I kind of I, I enjoyed speaking to them a lot more than <laughs> kind, of, kind of the ch- the kind of church in this new one. Um, yeah, and that's basically me. I'm I'm around. Do you know what I mean? My face my <laughs> kind of appears. So <laughs> you find me. The Wigan, the Wigan Louis Theroux. Okay. Yeah, week. No. <laughs> Well, Latic um, through. That's not that much. <laughs> Latic through and through. I think he's got more money than Wigan. <laughs> uh, thank you for listening to episode 16 of Cultural Truth Podcast. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at the Cultures Pod and our YouTube channel, uh, Culture Ultras Podcast. And we'll see you next week for another episode. Cheers, guys. See you later. Bye.